Coming through here. All right, we're live. Are people there? All right. I'm just polishing the wheels for this nice presentation. Charles, isn't this in your job description? Wheel polisher? Wheel polisher? Oh, that's leather pounding. We have we have some polishing compound we can what use. What is here. this? I think it's something used to polish brass. Is that true? Try it out. See how she works. No, oh. that doesn't work so well. Oh, maybe it's for that's cleaning so keyboards. Uh, I gotta yeah. pull up. <laughs> Let me pull up live on this guy. Oh. Why? Oh yeah, talking range. What's going on? Oh yeah. Yeah, product placement is very important. Okay. How many people we got on there? Yeah, let's let a few people join. One? We're still getting ready too. Eleven. Eleven? Fourteen. One hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven thousand. Oh, one hundred and eleven thousand. How many? Of, the real question is, how many of them are either my parents or Dave's parents? I don't think my parents know how to use. Yeah. yeah. Zero. Zero. What about? At His least parents. four, 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 of, mom is four of them are Charles. It, yeah. Shout out to Charles' mom. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so today, in a, just a few moments, we're going to talk through this new product that we've released called Moby Wheels. The full setup you can see is here. Let me drive this out a little bit so we can get it, Bill. Let me drive this lovely thing out on the cart. So, quick overview. This is for people that like controlling our Mobys but with wheels. Uh, historically, we've just controlled them with joysticks. Now you can control them with wheels. You can daisy chain up to nine modules um, to control all different kinds of things. For now, it's really just useful for pan, tilt, and roll. But in the future, as we expand our robotic ecosystem, you might want to control other things that we release with more wheels. Like, what could you do? Oh, just, you can do everything Why don't you just with brainstorm? Wheels. Oh, what you can do with wheels? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to mount one under my desk. And do what with it? And use it to scroll through web pages. <laughs> Don't worry about what's on those web pages, but sometimes you need to scroll quickly, you know? Do you have any ideas of what you do with wheels? Assad has promised me that he's going to hook me up and uh, get me like a wheels space mouse for CAD. Oh. So I can be like, still. Do you think that'll work well? He thinks it'll work well. I think it'll be terrible. Yeah. But it'll be fun either way. It's like etch a sketch. Etch a sketch. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's cool. We could Digital etch a sketch. We can make a big etch a sketch wall for Hugh's kids to, to paint with. I think that's a great idea. Anyway, in the near term, we'll be using them for boring things like pan, tilt, and roll on our gimbals. So many possibilities, though. So you can see, we got this guy. Whoop. When you Stop turn this wheel, it pans. When you turn this wheel, it tilts. And very skilled operators can do a combination of those two things to make beautiful shots. I, however, cannot. But people like Larry McConkie and Who others. out there. Larry, are you there? Yeah. We love you, Larry. We love you, Larry. Uh, can do wonderful things with wheels. The only thing I can do is a perfect pan because I just don't touch tilt. <laughs> so it's a secret. Let's start by explaining this entire wheels ecosystem that we've launched today so people know what's going on, why we're excited, why it's cool. Uh, we lost the case. Case is on the. Oh. Let me bring that back over here. I'm going to set that down there, oh. guys. Oh, here we go. So, this, thank you. This is a rundown. Shot to be out of the way. Um, this is a rundown of the components that make up wheels. So, this is the, what do we call this? That's the cheese plate. This is the cheese plate. Um, you can mount these 25 millimeter bobbins to different places on the cheese plate, and that allows you wheel modules out That's of the nice. case and That's mount them good. on the plates however you like. Additionally, on these wheel modules, you can mount these. If you could turn your phones to airplane mode, please, <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, you, can, you can change where these are mounted. So if you want to have it offset, you can. Um, and just to show how these mount, we've got a cheese plate here that's got two of the bobbins installed, and you can see how these quick release clamps just slide on there and allow you to mount it real quick. We'll dig into that more in a Super little bit. Super modular, that's the, that's the key. Super modular. Yeah. Um, so wheel module, uh, then we have the cabling. So there's CAN connectors and UART connectors. Uh, I don't actually know where the, where the cables are. I'll just pull one of them off of here to show. 
So these guys are just standard little free fly cables everybody's used to. If you've worked with Moby Pro, they're overmolded microfit cables with latching connectors. Those just plug in and allow you to daisy chain the can can connections on the wheel modules and whatever else you want to daisy chain. So they just there's an input and an output for can. You plug it in, daisy chain module to module to module, and there you go. That seems easy. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. And then walking through the module, the controls that are available on each module. We have this momentary button, so you push that. Can you make a noise each time I push it, Dave? Yeah, great haptic feedback there. Um, <laughs> and then this one is not laser engraved, but they're on the final oh. ones. These are some EV test ones. We don't have very many of these floating around right now, but on this speed knob, there's markings, so you can set your wheel speed to whatever your preference is. Um, you'll notice that these are very robust machine enclosures. Charles decided to close them with six huge fasteners. So you could put a crowbar there if you wanted to and try and pry that open. It definitely will not pry open. No, you should use a tool if you want to open it. Any comments on, any other comments on mechanics, Dave? I think it's beautiful. This is a 25 mil uh, quick release where that bobbin goes. Oh, that's the, a nice sound when that yeah, slides in. slides right in, stainless steel. Oh, look at that. Also, this is cool. You can mount the rosettes that we use on pilot on the end of these. So you can do things like this. I've got pilot mounted to this, the pilot force joystick and right. iris slider mounted to one of these bobbins. And then you could also mount it using the rosette in different places. So we've tried to think of the mounting interface that allows you to connect as many different things together as possible. Um, so continuing to go through kind of overview of everything. This is the stainless steel that wheel that we offer. Uh, and it's got this captive guy that allows you to attach it to the wheel module, which is nice. It just spins off. You can replace it, repair it. Um, these are very well balanced. We're rejecting any of the ones that aren't perfectly balanced before we ship. So we use those for very heavy Frisbees. Um, and then this guy, this guy is the, the mount that Charles developed that allows you to mount the movie controller or the Mimic. So you can see on this guy, I've got it set up just as maybe a, you know, this is to show maybe how a DIT would want to use it to control iris only. Or if you were in the, you know, shooting in a camera car and you wanted to hand off just roll control wirelessly, you could connect this wheel module to Mimic and then give, you know, you put the person in the back of the Cayenne and they're, they've got control of roll back here if you're doing oh, a really yeah. complex shot. I like that idea. Or you could remotely control Our Dave's web page scrolling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's... You'd be trying to work and I'd just be randomly scrolling. That's not a good idea. You don't think so? No, I don't like that one. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we include these two drivers. These are the perfect size drivers for, for mounting these bobbins and then also unscrewing these screws if you want to change where the mounting configuration, where the mounting attachment goes. And color-coded. And color-coded. And like a nice, nice like soft touch. See? It doesn't make, make a terrible noise like soft touch rubber, it's very nice. Good. There's also a mounting on the final unit, which I don't have here. There's a quarter 20 mounting point on the bottom as well. So you can bolt it directly to things if you want to. Oh, you can also put a rosette there. I just realized, smart. Ooh, what kind of USB connector is that? Oh, USB-C, I forgot about that. USB-C, everybody. USB-C, so it's a nice new style USB. Yeah. I love the USB-C. Reversible. Yeah, it's reversible, it's high current, it's strong. Mm, robust. Robust. What's not to like? Uh -huh. um, so I'm going to plug this cable back in. Let's talk. What should we talk about next? Charles, let's talk about, I think we talked about modularity a little bit. We talked about the op mounting options. We'll get into that more later when I do a full setup. Um, why don't you talk about designing this thing while I swing this at you? <laughs> so uh, I think when we started on this project, the thing that was most important to us was um, like user productivity and like even down to like the case, the, the modules stay wired together in the case. So when you get to set, you just pull the whole thing out, throw it on your tripod and you're ready to go. You don't have to find the cables. They're already there. It's already installed. So you can store it with it fully wired and just go. And it's sort of without any roadblocks. 
Joshua Papp yeah. asked if I was drinking a gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, it's it not. Seems appropriate. It's just water with some fruit in it, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the other uh, the other thing that you kept pushing me towards when we were designing it was uh, compactness and getting everything as close together as possible. And I think we've achieved that with, like, you can put these bobbins really, really close together and get your, your setup, you know. The 45 degree cut on the side of the module lets you get two modules, like, smack dab right next to each other. Yeah. So if you're in a cramp, like you're in the back of the car and you're trying to, you know, do the shot. Or a rickshaw. Or a rickshaw, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Or if you're at a set and you can spread out, like, the setup over here and kind of, you know, fully take up the room that you need to. Really lay out. Yeah, just kind of just get cash and, you know, you can have your gin and tonic. And, <laughs> yeah, I, really ideal. I think yeah. the other thing we try to think out, th think about throughout this project is what would Larry McConkie want to do with the setup that we haven't accommodated for mm -hmm. that he won't have to fire up the machine, the milling machine, and custom make some adapter. So I think with the combination of things that Charles has made, you can create just about anything you can dream of. I know Larry will invalidate that statement somehow mm -hmm. and have some crazy requirement that... In three, two, one. Yeah, go. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Uh, but yeah. Amount. So I think, um, you know, kind of talking about... The, some of these things are not enabled yet in software. Like, we don't have integration for this force joystick and iris module yet, but it will come in the future. The thing that I'm excited about is just the ability to configure quickly these different kinds of setups based upon, you know, whatever use case you have. Like maybe Hugh and I are out shooting and he just wants to have really smooth control of roll on this wheel, but he wants to control the Movi pan and tilt with the really nice force joystick. It's super awesome to just be able to um, set this thing up quickly and have it do the things that you think it could do. Um, just, you know, the ability to mount all these things quickly on these quick release bobbins and, you know, you can adjust if mm -hmm. you say you want a little bit, you know, say you're standing a little bit sideways, you want to angle your handle. Um, you know, everything's just super quick to adjust, remove, troubleshoot, put back on, figure out whatever, whatever configuration you like. Maybe you like it like that. Maybe you like it over here, roll it around. I look forward to what people do with these. Yeah. It's going to be some creative stuff happening. I think as long as we keep building out the software such that it's easy to pick the module and then tell somebody what you want it to do, uh, people will continue to do really awesome stuff with oh, it. Oh, yeah. Any other thoughts on design process? Um, I, I had some other questions for you. Um, what were some of the constraints that we were dealing with? So when we first started it, we, we wanted a lot of inertia, and uh, we tried to build all that in by... Uh, making it really complex on the inside and having a flywheel and belts and in the end it turned out that simple is best and we got the inertia just by having a really really solid good feeling hand wheel that functions correctly and you know has really good run out and has a good feeling handle and it's easy to put on and remove and just you know does the job the way that people want it to without having a whole bunch of other miscellaneous stuff that ruins the day and you know, complicates everything. Simple is best. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we I think in the original spec, we had all sorts of other buttons and functions and things, and we winnowed it down, and now we have the speed knob, and we have a pause, and we have an LED that tells you what's going on, and it's as simple as that. You know, there's things you can do on Movie Controller and Mimic to, you know, dial in your experience and get it to be just right. But as far as the wheels go and the cheese plate, everything's just exactly the right level of complexity. Yeah, dr more. Drone Dudes asked if you need a Mobi controller to connect to the wheels to the gimbal. Uh, as of launch, you do need a Mobi controller, but we'll be releasing firmware updates that allow you to connect direct to Mimic soon. So you'll be able to use the Mimic as the hub if you want to instead of Mobi controllers. Um, what was the most difficult part to get right on wheels, like on the design side? Um, I Initially, it was the, the concepts for, for mounting, like getting to this, uh, what appears to be at first glance, fairly simple and obvious solution it took a little while. I mean, we tried all sorts of different things and tubes and other clamps and things. And eventually this solution, I think it happened in five minutes and we were just like, oh, done. And, yeah. You know, simple is best. Mm -hmm. Again. 
and we'll also spend a lot of time getting the friction lock working mm. properly. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Let me pull one of these wheels off just to show what the final configuration looks like. Oh, are you still connected? Yeah, I got a cable in the way. Oops. So this is what the final thing looks like. Uh, there's this change here where we've got this friction lock where if you lock that all the way, the wheel no longer moves. And then as you back it off, you can apply a varying degree of friction to the wheel, which is nice for some instances. Like, you know, in the example I gave a second ago where the DIT might want to adjust this, but have it stay really, really precisely where he lets go. Or if you're in, in the back of a car and you're doing roll and you want really smooth control of it, but you want to have a little bit of friction um, you know, the ability to kind of turn the friction on and off and then choose different points in between is helpful. And then what I spoke about earlier, just this laser engraved so you can remember the speed setting that works well for your application and then that's the pause button. So we'll plug this guy back in. Actually, why don't we go, uh, do you want to just do a full setup on this so people can see? Sure. Okay. So I'll take it. All, I'm gonna take it all apart. Set all the parts on this table. And then we'll set it up. So then here. I'll do it. One thing we didn't, like we'll talk about real quick here, is there's this nice mount for a Movi controller that allows you to just pick up the mount that goes with Movi controller, and you can slot this on real easily, and then also tip it out of the way when you need more room, which is handy. So, let's say you're getting to set, and you have some type of Mitchell mount to use. We've got uh, our Mitchell adapter here that goes right to Hughes' custom Steadicam cart. We just bolted the cheese plate that comes with Moby wheels down. Um, then we'll need to just attach the three wheels. So that's as simple as dropping them on the post, hitting that quick release clamp. What is this hole for in the cheese plate? Ooh, that's a handle. Look at oh, a handle. Yeah, that's that so you seems, can carry it. That seems nice. Yeah. Look at Charles. Oh, Charles is going to demo that for us. There we go. you got to wait for, wait for Hugh. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, nice. Price is right. Price is right? No. Oh. <laughs> nice is right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so drop three wheel modules in, uh, and then you can, I sometimes daisy chain them w without in the mobile controller installed just so I can see the connectors a little bit better. So I'm doing, all I'm doing is can from wheel three to wheel two, and then Lose a can cable? Yeah, you borrowed this one earlier. Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. So then we got to do can from cable two or wheel two to wheel one. And these are labeled on the back of the wheels, and it can only go in one size connector. It can go in either one. And it can't go in the one I was trying to put it in. There we go. So we're wired up there. So then we drop the movie controller on. And the last step is to connect the Mobi controller data cable to the, the primary wheel. And so that just goes out of the aux port on Mobi controller and then comes down and connects to one of the UART connectors on this first wheel. And you'll see when I did that, all three wheel LEDs powered up. Um, I can pause any of the wheels, which turns off control to them. And then I'm gonna jump in and operate here for a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Let's turn this guy like this so you can get the, there we go. So you can see I've got control of tilt here and I have the ability to set the speed from very, very slow. So I'm doing tons and tons of revolutions to take, make a tiny tilt there. 
all the way up to super, super fast, where it follows, you know, one to one. And it's crazy, scary fast almost. Yeah, it's a little frightening. So you have to be really, really smooth when you're using this, but it's incredible. I mean, to have it respond <clears throat> as well as it does on wheels. Oh, and one thing to talk about, um, when you get your wheels, when we ship it, you'll have a new firmware update for Mobi controller. And then when you go into TX config, there's a new TX mode, a transmitter mode called Mobi wheels. So when you change into that, you get this new screen, which shows you the directions on the wheels. It shows which one you have it mapped to. So I have pan, tilt, and none mapped right now. I don't have roll enabled on this system uh, to show. And then it shows you your speed. So you can see as I adjust these speeds, they update on Mobi controller and give you good feedback of where you're at. So, you know, let's say you find out that you like 2.5 on pan and you end up liking 1.5 on tilt. It's very easy to achieve those again, looking either there or at the laser engraved marks on the wheel module. And then all the other normal TX config items are available there. And I think the thing that I'd highlight on this is just how direct, how low the latency is, and how fast it responds to movements. And the nice thing is you can remove all the smoothing from the Mobi parameters because you have a little bit of mechanical smoothing from the inertia and the wheels. So it allows you to run really, really high hold strengths, really, really low smoothing, really, really low window, and you get just a you know, crazy connected feel where if you're good with these things, you can really work magic, which I'm not so good. You, are you good? You want to try? I don't know, you know. He spent a lot of time on a machine tool. I have, CNC. yeah. Well, that's a good shot, Dave. Well, look at ourselves, see? Yeah, it really Pressure. does feel great. Joysticks can kind of be like aggravating sometimes because you can't hit that same spot every time, but with this it's much easier because you have so much more travel. All right, we got a few more questions coming in. Or mimic it with like friction lock. Heart. What's the power source? Uh, so the power source comes from the Mobi controller aux cable. So the Mobi controller is piping power to the wheels through this IDX plate. Or if you connected to be a USB-C or Mimic, it would pipe power through that. Uh, nice quick release option there. Looks like the nums, nubs have multiple points of contact, so it shouldn't spin loose. Yeah, the, the bobbins have, or the, the 25 millimeter posts, they mount with two, what are those? They're quarter M5, 20. Quarter 20. Are they? Quarter 20, 15 millimeters apart. There you go, quarter 20, 15, 50 millimeters also. apart. 15? 15. Yeah. And then the center is also quarter 20. So if okay. you have a tripod, you can mount it right in the center. Yeah. So you, if you use our our quick or our cheese plate, you can pick up those two bolt holes so they won't spin on you when you don't want it. Uh, USB-C. Yeah, USB-C to any modules. Uh, I think that's it for questions. What else do we want to talk about? Oh, some technical stuff. Um, so you'll be able to set the low, you know, as low a speed as you want and all the way up to one to one ratio. So one to one would mean that for every movement I do here, it's completely matched there, which is very fast and hard to control yeah. for my skill set. Uh, technical details on the wheel modules themselves. They're pretty simple. They've got big bearings, balanced steel wheels. We've got a, mag a high resolution magnetic encoder inside of there. So it's robust. You don't have to worry about optical systems getting, you know, not bounced around, around and damaged. Yeah. There's not a lot to go wrong. Um, another question? Would you demonstrate the minimum latency, please? Sure. Uh, it's kind of tough to do on this, but I think the easiest way is if, if you try and look from the movement on my hand to the movement on that gimbal. The way you can really test it is if we got a stopwatch or a, uh, a timer on an iPhone and then filmed it in slow motion and you could see the latency, but it's very, very low. If you look at move, movement in my hand to movement in the camera, it's very low. 
Oh yeah, there's a case. It's right over here. I'm gonna show it. So this is a case that we'll ship with. Space for three wheel modules. The stock configuration is two. You can buy one if you want to. You can buy three if you want to. You can kind of buy anything. You can buy steel wheels. You can buy brass wheels. The tools fit in here. Uh, this nice little plate. This drops right in there. And then additional wheel modules you can slot right in. Then there's a space for cables, accessories, whatever you want there. Anything else you want to touch on on the case? The case has room for you to be able to leave everything wired together in the standard configuration. And there's even room here for you to get your hand in underneath, right in the center of gravity. So you just yank on it and the whole thing comes out. Yeah, the way, the way that we shipped the two axis configuration there, these bobbins are mounted right there to the plate, so you can leave it set up as is and just pull it right out of the case and it's ready to go. Just mount it to your tripod or quick release or whatever you're going to use. Um, question? Oh. No? Yeah, that's how the fasteners go in there. What do you think, Dave? What do you think about all this? I think this is a good bit of kit. I never thought we'd build wheels. I didn't either. We started this program a few times. So and many then times. It and then started it and then stopped it and then started it and stopped it again. Finally. It's decided, great to have yeah, them finally done. I know. There's so many people over the years who have said, like, oh, I love the movie, but it'd be great if you had wheels. And to finally have wheels that are as low latency and precise as we knew that they could be, it was it's really yeah. exciting. We put our heart into it so we don't have to, you know, these are really good. We'll have to redesign them soon. Question? Weight, the wheel part. Uh, the weight? Uh, the steel wheel is, is... I'd say it's about a kilogram. It's The steel wheel is 1.7 kilograms, and the brass wheel is right under two. I'd say it's about a ton, metric ton. A metric ton? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they're heavy. Plus or minus mm -hmm. a metric ton, that's dead on. It's a lot of mm. Charles and I argued, KGs. Charles and I argued a lot about how to balance these things, so I'm <laughs> very happy that they're precisely balanced. It makes me very, very happy. Oh, precision. <laughs> precision. 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 Um, what else do we want to talk about? This is an important question. What's that? When will it be available and what's the cost? Oh, geez. <laughs> Tough questions. Uh, I think we have a limited quantity that will start shipping within the next seven days, and then depending on demand, it'll take some time for us to restock after that. Uh, the cost, it varies for the different different modules. The single module is $14.95. Two axis is twenty nine ninety five, and I think the three axis is thirty nine ninety five, and then the brass wheels are add ons on top of that. Whether you want to upgrade the brass or just run with stainless steel, it's a personal preference thing. Oh, uh, no, sorry, skip that. You oh you Charles wants a cut out wheels plug. We we'll have in the launch film. You might notice that some of the wheels have cut out cutouts in them to make them look so spoke cool. Design. Spoke design. Arrow wheels. Arrow wheels. Yeah, those will be coming in the next order for for parts, so you'll be able to get the arrow wheels if you're so inclined. Uh, I think the last thing <laughs> to touch on is just uh, we have a giveaway uh, for people that buy Movi Pro in the next 30 days. We're giving get? away five sets of wheels. Wow. Five. That's five sets. Okay. Yeah. So if you Jeez. get a Movi Pro or Movi XL. XL, thank you, Cindy. Um, we'll, we might give you a set of wheels in the next 30 days. That's super exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder who's going to win. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be somebody that's like, I hate wheels. <laughs> I'm never, never going to use them. It always is. <laughs> uh, do you have anything else to add? Oh, no, I'm, I'm excited to get this, get this out there. Dave went to Arctic Monkeys last night. How was it? I did. It was, it was good, yeah. Q, you Q the was there pit? as well. I was in the mosh pit. I was oh. up by the stage, yeah, pretty close. I hope you guys had fun. I was editing the wheels launch video. <laughs> Just for the viewers, these are two of my co-founders. <laughs> Wear your plugs if you go to concerts, kids. <laughs> Charles, any last words? I hope people like them. I do. Yeah, I like them too. Please buy wheels so that they're a beloved enough product that they can make it onto our timeline wall, and then we'll put a nice little, uh, nice little Charles Bitmoji near them. Yeah. Frank Bitmoji. <laughs> all right, that's all I have. Thanks for joining. Thanks, any, guys. Well, hold on, any other questions? Any oh, other questions uh -huh. come in? Is there wheel style? Yeah, wheel style, but CNC turning knob. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. 
No, I mean, we just have this kind, that kind, and then the cutout kind. The, 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 the wheels that we have on, like, our mill and stuff are not super impressive. So, mm -mm. I don't know. Yeah, you must don't... have a nicer mill than we do. Must be. Is that any other questions? All right. High five. See you later. Well, later, folks. Finish my gin and tonic. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait.